Yeah, good afternoon. My name is Andy Kahn. I'm Director of Victim Services, Victim Advocacy, Crime Stoppers of Houston. I just want to thank everybody for being up here on short notice. I've been working with homicide survivors now for 30 plus years, and just when you think you've seen it all, you haven't. This is absolutely one of the most gut-wrenching scenarios that I've dealt with, and I've seen a lot and been through a lot, and I cannot imagine what this family is going through. And just talking with family members today and everything, I just want to ask everybody to pray for them, give them every, a virtual hug. They have an incredibly long, emotionally draining, grueling journey ahead of them. As a board member of Parents of Murdered Children and Surviving Family Members of Homicide, I can unequivocally tell you that this is the worst that you can ever possibly imagine and to lose this many family members at this type of what happened. Seriously, I can't sugarcoat it. It doesn't get any worse than what it is today. There has been an incredible outpouring of support for the Collins family, not just locally, not just statewide, but all over the world. And that have been reaching out, offering their condolences and support. The Collins family has set up a GoFundMe site, and I'll just tell you what it is right now. There have been other GoFundMe sites, and we know how it is, and we get it. People want to help. I get it. But we wanted to make sure that we had more control over anybody that was doing a GoFundMe because we did not know who was doing some of the GoFundMe. So we do ask if people do want to contribute to the family, and I know the outpouring is there, that the family does have a GoFundMe site, and it's organized by Stacy S-T-A-C-I-E, Barron, B-A-R-R-O-N. So if you do want to donate, please donate to this GoFundMe fund only and not some of the others that, that have popped up there as well. And at this time, I'm going to read a statement from the Collins family. And the, uh, just give me a, a second. Uh, we, are at, we are devastated by the loss of our dear family members at the family ranch, ranch in Centerville, Texas. Our loved ones who tragically lost their lives on Thursday, June 2nd, 2022, were Mark Collins, age 66, and his grandsons, Waylon, age 18, Carson, age 16, Hudson, age 11, and Bryson, age 11. These precious people who loved and were loved by so many will never be forgotten. The impact on their family and friends cannot be overstated. The family is asking for the public to please allow them to grieve with their family and close friends at this time. And please respect their privacy. You know, there will be eventually, there more than likely will be a time. But for right now, we're just asking everybody to give the family privacy that you would want and that I would want and that they truly deserve right now. As far as what happened, I mean, I, I, there's a lot of questions right now and no answers. And we're going to get answers one way or another over this tragic yet from our perspective, utterly preventable, preventable situation. I'm going to ask their pastor to come up, Pastor Steve, to come up here, who's been with uh, the family now for just about a decade, to talk about uh, the church, 
the family and what they can do to help this family through this god-awful enduring grieving process that they're now having to endure. Steve? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Andy. My name is Steve Besner. I'm the senior pastor here at Houston Northwest Church. I've had the distinct honor of being the pastor for the Collins family since January of 2013. I can say unequivocally that they are a family of the greatest character, the deepest faith, and unrelenting kindness and love. They have treated me, my family, and this church with deep generosity. As long as they have been here, they have been pillars in this church and in this community now for over 40 years, and we are heartbroken with them over this tragedy that has struck their family. The scriptures tell us that the Lord draws near to the brokenhearted, and so we are grateful that we can call upon the presence of the Lord. Uh, we do not blame God for what has happened in this moment, but instead we cry out to him, knowing that he draws near to us in the midst of a sinful, broken world, knowing that we have evil in this world, but knowing that we have a God that we can call upon. Due to the nature of the circumstances surrounding this particular tragedy, we do not have details for services at this time. As soon as we do have details for services, we'll be posting those to our church's social media feeds, so you can keep an eye on those, and we'll release those details as soon as we have them. But we don't have them right now at this time. I was honored to sit with the family last night and this morning again for several hours, and the characteristic that continued to jump out was unrelenting faith. They did not understand why. None of us can understand why. But they continued to say, we trust that God is good, and we know that he is with us in the midst of these circumstances. You might be wondering how they could ever think that as Christians, our core doctrine, our core faith is one that Jesus rose from the dead and that one day those who place their faith in him will also join him in the resurrection. And so we place our hope in that resurrection. We invite others to do so as well so that they might experience hope and comfort in the midst of this tragedy. Thank you so much. And we, we do ask that you would respect the family's privacy, but you are welcome to join us whenever we have services in the near future. Thank you so much. Do we want to do that now or do we want to wait uh, a second? Let's just wait. Yeah. Get, we'll do it at the end if that's all right. Okay. This time I'm going to ask a longtime colleague of mine whom I was just heartbroken that we had to reconnect this way, who's been a family friend of the Collins family, and I'm sure a lot of people out there know David Crane, but I'm going to ask David to come up here on his involvement with the family and just how what a horrific nature this is today. Thank you, Andy. Uh, my name is David Crane, C-R-A-I-N, and as Andy said, I've been a longtime friend of the Collins, and uh, I've been also a longtime uh, law enforcement officer. I've seen a lot, just like Andy, and what has happened to the Collins family is just unspeakable. Uh, those those kids were bright shining stars when we coached them through baseball and these next few days are going to be tough on all of us and we <clears throat> we just really ask y'all to respect uh what the family's going through what we're all going through and uh give us that time to grieve and uh i mean e even the the hardest of the hard. This is, this is very difficult to take, and uh, but we'll get through it. And we also respect the Rangers. Uh, their investigation is still ongoing. Um, I've been in communication with the Rangers. They've been nothing but, but first class, as they always are. Uh, and I know that uh, as, as the days go on, we're going to find out more about what happened and why it happened. And, and, and then if, if, you know, steps can be take, taken to make sure it doesn't happen again, then that's where we go. But in the meantime, I just want everybody to remember the Collins boys, the, the whole community here has suffered a loss. It's going to be un, unfillable. So, thanks. 
sometimes if there's any questions, you know, I'm, we'll do our best to answer, you know, everything that we can. So if anybody has any questions. Pastor, I just wanted you, if you would just talk a little yeah. about the family. They of course. have a long history here. You know them personally. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that, as I already mentioned, it's just a family of deep faith, but I think that one of the things that everyone here would speak to is it's a very close-knit family. It's a large family, multiple siblings, multiple generations. In fact, uh, the great-grandfather of the family uh, was a member here as well, uh, and so, or, and still is, rather. And, and I just think that, that the close-knit nature of the family is what makes this so incredibly devastating but also is something that is beautiful to watch because they have such a strong support system. The kids were very involved in sports, you know, baseball, football activities, as you already just heard from David, uh, they're incredibly active in the community, very well known here, very well beloved here. And so the outpouring of support from the community is not simply in response to the tragedy, but it's actually in response to the fact that they are just loved people in the community. this guy was coming who escaped three and a half weeks ago and got out and they couldn't find him and, and all this other stuff that transpired. Right. I, I don't know that I can really speak to that. I think that all we can do right now is just trust that law enforcement will do their jobs as best they can. I think that obviously we're, we're heartbroken at the tragedy um, and that's, that's really the thing we're focusing on right now on that front. Can you talk to us about the children? I know the 18-year-old had just graduated. Just graduated, yeah. Can you talk to us just a little bit about who he was and maybe are they brothers or are they from different families? Right. So uh, the, uh, the first three names, I, I don't remember uh, Andy's statement right offhand. Yeah. Waylon, Carson. Right. Okay, yeah. right. So uh, Waylon, Carson, and Hudson are all siblings. And, um, and then Bryson is in a different family. But, but Mark was their grandfather. Hudson was actually just baptized uh, by his grandfather, not, not, uh, not Mark, but, a, but his other grandfather three days ago uh, in, the, in the family swimming pool. So uh, as I mentioned, faith, a really central part of their family and um, yeah, just heartbroken. You said Bryson's from a different family? Well, uh, that's right. So the, the first three boys are all siblings and then Bryson is their cousin. I'm sorry, I don't know their grades off offhand, just their ages. I apologize about that. Okay, thank you. Anything else? David, are, are you still are you active or retired? I just look retired. I'm active. <laughs> in, in SO, right? Yes. Okay. I had one more question. Can you give us your rank? I'm a homicide investigator. What is the best way for people to help? Pray. Yeah, I mean, pray. I mean, I, I, I'm sure, like I said, they're, they are aware of so many people that are supporting them and all over the world. And I'm sure it's heartwarming for them to see how loved everyone was and still is in their family. So, you know, like David and Steve said, pray for them. Help the family get through this. You know, I said if they do, if anyone does make a contribution, I, I, want, I gave you the the actual GoFundMe that we actually know that we are coordinating with. So if, if people do, and I and I, and I know people do because I've been doing this for a long time. But this is about as bad as it gets. And I don't know. And it's been a, obviously a very difficult few weeks for the people here in the state of Texas. And what happened yesterday just compounds it even more, especially when you have four people that, uh, young people, that never had a chance to grow old. And so there's a lot of questions out there. And as we proceed, and as David said, we're going to get answers. Maybe just uh, yeah. He was aware that the inmate had escaped in that area, and um, 
I think law enforcement had been in touch with the family early on uh, as they talked about the search and uh, they were clearing the properties out there. I understand they had cleared that house multiple times. Uh, whether or not they were made aware that a burglary occurred two or three days prior to the next door house that was linked to uh, the fugitive, uh, I, I don't know that they were ever made aware of that. I, I do feel that had Mark been made aware that he was within a day or two of being on his property, he would have never exposed those kids to that danger. Uh, but, you know, I, I, I can't speak to what Mark knew or didn't know, uh, but I, I just don't know that. How often did they go up there? Uh, they were up there pretty frequently, and that was a very common place. My kids have gone up there. Uh, we've, we frequent the, the Collins Ranch a lot. Um, probably weekly, uh, especially as schools let out and the summer's on, they were up there with their granddad fishing and, you know, doing what kids do. And have you spoken to any CPJ folks over uh, the last couple weeks? I have not. Okay. Have you spoken to them since, like, like No, my communications have all been with the rangers who are leading okay. the investigation. Okay. Is that how you learned about the burglary that happened a few days ago? Yes. Is there any indication how long did you have had their house or the ranch? No. Can you talk about that ranch, just what made it special, what, what they look forward to? Well, I mean, that, that ranch is a kid's dream. I mean, it's uh, big ponds, boats, uh, they, they could shoot guns, uh, there's a lot of deer up in that area, uh, but my kids in particular, they love to fish and uh, Waylon loved to fish and that's what they did. Do you know that the vehicle, was that just a vehicle that the family kept at the ranch? It was, yes. The, the, the truck that the uh, fugitive stole was the farm truck. And so. did he steal any weapons from the farm? Uh, I'm going to leave that to the rangers to, to discuss the, the weapons that were involved and stuff. That's part of their active investigation. I don't want to go there. Are you upset at the CPJ with some of the folks? No. I'm grieving the loss of these kids. I'll leave it at that. So, okay. Yeah, I'm with, and if you notice, we didn't bring up the suspect's name, and nor will we, because this day is about Mark, it's about Waylon, Carson, Hudson, and Bryson. That's who this day is about. They're the ones who we want the pictures of. They're the ones who we want the public to remember not the perpetrator. So, and again, I just thank you everybody. And again, thank you for respecting the family's wishes at this time. And again, our hearts and prayers go out, but uh, this is just very difficult times right now, what's going on in not just here, but all over the world with violence and society. So just pray for everybody. Thank you. Pray, if you don't mind. Lord, we thank you uh, that, that